Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single one of these problems. If you're interested in watching the solutions to any of the original, if you're interested in watching the original solutions to any one of these problems, you will find the original solutions from day number one through 250. Right now, we are in the process of redoing the problems, and we are on page number 184. Please turn to it. Page number 184. Problem number 222. Problem number 222. Problem number 222 is very similar to it is very similar to number 186 and number 201 in case you want to look at those as well. Here is what the problem says. We are, we are told that there are 200 total people. We are told that out of those 200, 100 30 is study chemistry and 150 is study biology. We are also told that at least at least 30 is study neither. Question is how much study how, how many of them, not how much rather, how many is study both. How many of them study both? It is slightly different than these two problems. It's not exactly the same problem, but it's very similar. Here's what's going on. We are told that 130 study chemistry. We are also told that 150 study biology. If we add up 130 and 150, if we add up 130 and 150, we get 280. 200 and 80. But at least 30 is 30 neither. At least 30 is 30 neither. We are told the total is 200. So if you're going to pretend this is the total, if you're going to pretend that 30 is 30 neither, this is the, this is the least number, at least we are told, not, not at most, at least this is the least number. This adds up to 170. This adds up to 170. This is 180. If we add up these two numbers, 130 study chemistry, 150 study biology, this adds up to, one, one to 280. If we had 30 students who studied neither, that's the minimum. If we had 30, that's only that, that difference is 170, this is 280. If you take away 170 from it, if that's the scenario we're dealing with, if we're dealing with a scenario that exactly 30 of them study neither, if that's the scenario we're dealing with there, it turns out that exactly 30 of them study neither, then in that case, when we add up these two numbers, chemistry and biology, chemistry and biology adds up to 280, and if, if, if 30 of them study neither, that's 170, which means, what about this 110, the, the discrepancy between 280 and 170, this, what about this 110? What does this 110 represent? What does this 110 represent? Why, why are they adding up to 280 when we know they should add up to 170? Because we have 200 people, and we are working on the assumption that exactly 30 of them study neither. If exactly 30 of them study neither, then that should have been 170. But they are up to 280. This 110 represents a number that is counted, that is double counted rather, that is counted twice, that is double counted. These are the people, these are the people, these are the people who study both. Now let's show this thing, let's show this thing in the Venn diagram. Let's show it in the Venn diagram. Where can I do it? I left no room at all. We don't need this part. Now remember, we're dealing here in this scenario, we're dealing with the scenario where we, we, we pretend that 30 is 30 neither. Now is 30 does 30 represent the study represents the highest possible number of people who study neither or the least possible number of people who study neither. It says at least 30 and we are taking 30. This is the least. This is the least. This is the minimum. This is the minimum. So 
let's, let's, let's start our process here. There's the chemistry. Let's put chemistry on this side. And chemistry is 130. 130 goes here. We have a biology here. Let's put the biology on this side. And we have 150 for biology. Let's put it here. And what happens is that, again, we, we're going to repeat the procedure. I'm just explaining one more time. 130 plus 180, 130 plus 180 adds up to 280. But we know that if we, if we assume this, that 30 of them is 30 neither, then we should have had 170. We should have had 170 because 200 minus 30 is 170. These two add up to 280. That tells us that 110 is being counted twice. 110 is double counted. That represents the number of people who are studying both. And that goes in the middle. 110 is to study both. Now, as soon as we put the, any number at all in the common area, as soon as we put something in the common area, we have to immediately go and adjust this figure right away. Otherwise, we're going to forget it. So 110 out of this 130, we're pretending that out of those 130, 110 study also biology. So this becomes 20. Similarly here, out of 150, in the depiction that we are having here, is that out of those 150, 110 also study chemistry. But only 40, now we take away 110, only 40 study biology. So here, the scenario that we're depicting here is this, okay? This is a summary, this is a recapitulation of what we're, uh, what, what we're depicting here. The scenario we're depicting is that exactly 30 study neither, exactly 40 study biology, exactly 20 of them study, uh, ex 40 of them study biology only, 20 of them study chemistry only, 20 of them study chemistry only, and 110 study both. Now let's do, just purely out of curiosity, what was the question asking? What is the question asking? Just give me one second. Then the number of number of students measuring in both can be any number from. Oh, so we do have to do the other part. So this is one scenario. This is the least number. This is the least number. Now let's pick up speed so we can keep on going. Now, the, to find the most number of people, to find the most number of people who study both, is to look at these two numbers. Let's pretend. Let's, so now we're doing the other part where. We're not going to, we're not pretending, okay, we're, going to be, we're starting a second part, the second part, second half of the solution. Instead of pretending 30 of them study neither, we're going to take all 20 of these and put them in here. This becomes 130. This becomes 130, which means there is no students, there is no students who studies chemistry only. In this scenario, what we're depicting now, in this scenario, what we're depicting now is the fact that if there is a student who is taking chemistry, that student must also take the biology. There is no student who takes chemistry only. All 130 students who study chemistry also study biology. So as soon as we put 130 there, this is no longer 150, uh, this, this is no longer 40. We had 150 to start out with, we are putting 130 in the common area, this becomes 20. Okay, watch what happens. 20 plus 130, 20 plus 130, 20 plus 130 is 150. We have a total of 200 students. So here, in this scenario, what we are depicting is the situations where it is not the least, it is not the least, well, let's not erase this part, this, this was the least part, this was the least part, that was the previous scenario, the scenario that we are discussing here is the most, 50, we study both, and this is the most, the highest number of students that we can have in this solution, in this problem, in this situation, the highest number of students who can study, the highest number of students that we can have who study both is 50. The least number that we can have is 30 because that's what the problem tells us. The problem tells us that at least 30 study both. So that's the, that's the least. This is the most. Why can't we go more than 50? Because there are, there, there are no left here. This, this guy is zero now. If, because if you were to take anything from here, if you were to take two people from there and put it in the middle, we also have to take two people from here and put it in the middle, but there is none left here. All the 130 people who study chemistry also study biology. Let me erase this previous part because this might confuse somebody. Let me erase this, this 120 no longer exists. This is what we're talking about. So we start out with 130 and 150 to begin with. We put all of those 130 in the common area. Let's erase this part so that it doesn't confuse anybody. So one more time, we start out with 130 and 150, like just like the problem tells us. 130 of them study chemistry, 150 of them study biology, and then we take all 130 of them and put it in the middle. That's the maximum we can have. As soon as we put all 130 in the, in the common area, chemistry 
130, we have crossed out this 130, so subtract 130 from 130, we get a 0 here. Subtract 130 from 150, we get a 20 here. Do you understand? Okay. So the question was, how many of the people study most? In what range? The answer is from 110 to 130. From 110 to 130, and that answer choice would be answer choice D, as in David. Let's do the next one. The next one we're going to do is this guy right here, uh, 186. Just for practice, even though even though we have done it again, we have done it obviously before. Let's do it for practice. Let's do 201 first, very quickly. In 201, which is on page number 180, 201 we are told 75% answered one correctly. We are also told that 55% of the people answered number two correctly. 55% answered number two correctly. And we also told that 20% answered neither. I'm going to raise all of this thing. We need the room. We are redoing this problem, obviously. Obviously, we have done 201 already. We are redoing it. So here, we are dealing with percentages. And since we are dealing with percentages, the total has to add up to 100. But we are told that 20% of the people answered neither of those two questions correctly. They were, two, they were asked two questions. We are told that 75% of the people answered, answered number one correctly. So here is our Venn diagram. The number of people, well, I shouldn't say number of people, because here what we are dealing with is not number of people, but rather percentages of people. The percentage of the people who answered question number one correctly, we are told, is 75%. It's 75%. The percentage of the people who answered number two correctly, we are told, is 55%. But if we add up 75 and 55, we get zero, we get carry one, eight plus, we get 130. What, what should this add up to? It should add up to 80. It should add up to 80. Because we are told that 20%, 20% of them answered neither. Well, if 20% answered neither, that means 80% of the people must have answered either question number one correctly, or question number two correctly, or both of the questions correctly. And that should represent, that should add up to 80. This adds up to 130. That tells us that 50 of them are double counted. 50 of them are double counted. These are the people who answered both of the questions correctly. These 50, are, these 50, these 50 people are counted first as the 50 people who answered question number one correctly, and then the same 50 people are counted one more time when we begin to count the number of people who answered number two correctly. We're counting them twice. It appears in the middle area, in, in the common area. As soon as we put a 50 here, we have to go back and immediately adjust the two figures. So if you put a 50 here, this 50 out of this 55, 50 of them also answered question number one correctly, and this 55 now becomes five which tells us that there are 5% of people who answered only number, question number 2 correctly and not 1. And similarly, as soon as we 50 put 50 here, we have to go back and change this to 25. And that tells us that 25% of people answered question number 1 correctly, but not number 2. And 50%, half the people answered both of the questions correctly. And now, as you can see, 25 plus 5 is 30, 30 plus 5 is 30 plus 50 is 80. And of course, 80% of the people answered either 1 or 2 or both correctly and 20% answered neither. Do you understand? Let's do the next one, which is question number 186. Another question dealing with one di Venn diagram, 186. One hundred eighty-six appeared on page number 178 page 178. Here we are told that we have 30 applicants. We have 30 applicants, which means they have to add up to 30, obviously, everything. Out of this 30, we are told that 14 of them have experience. We are further told that 18 of these 30 people have college degree. And we are told that 30 of them have neither. 30 of them have neither. Let's see. So here is, a, here is our experience. 
and here is our degree. We are told that 14 of them have experience. So 14 of them have experience. We are further told that 18 of them have degrees. And then they go on to tell us that 30 of them have neither. There are th 3 of them have neither. So there is 30 total. 3 of them have neither. 3 people apply for the job and these 3 people have neither neither the job experience, neither they have no neither the experience nor a college degree. They just showed up and said give me a job. Do you understand? And therefore, we have 27 people. We must we have 27 people. These 27 people have either a college degree but no experience or they have experience but no college degree or they have both but they should add up to 27 if we add up these two figures 18 and, and, and 14 14 and 18 you get 32 it should add up to 27 that tells us that if we subtract 27 that tells us that these five are double counted How are they double counted? How are these five people double counted? Because these five people are counted first as the people who have a college degree. And then same five people are, are counted again as people who have experience because they have both. And they go in the middle as the common area. As soon as we put a five there, as soon as we put any number in the middle, we have to immediately go and adjust these figures. So this 18 is going to become 13. And this 14 minus 5 is going to become 9. So here we have situations where out of those 30 applicants for the job, 9 people have experience but not a college degree. Out of those 30 people, we have 13 people of such nature that they do have college degree but no job experience. These are new people. They're fresh out of college. Do you understand? Novices. And then we have 5 people we have who have both college degree and a job experience. And then there are, of course, 3 of them who have neither. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.